In the United States, over the last decade, 60,000 pedestrians died under the wheels of an automobile. One million pedestrians were injured. Join us for the next half hour as we take a look at perils for pedestrians. On this episode, we look at pedestrian access to a shopping mall in Huntsville, Alabama. Then we learn about the Alabama Bicycle Coalition. Education is a key part of their mission. We talk with a blind pedestrian in Birmingham. We look at problems for pedestrians in Birmingham. Finally, we meet a mother trying to walk with her children in Tuscaloosa. Stay tuned. We're in Huntsville, Alabama, talking with Marjorie Holderer, who's president of the Alabama Bicycle Coalition. What is the coalition? The coalition is a organization of sister partnerships that promote uh, cycling safety, access, and education for cyclists around the state. Now, what's what's this big mall we're standing next to? We're standing next to Valley Bend at Jones Farm. It's here in Huntsville, beautiful valley, new mall, lots of great shopping here. But we have a little problem with access for pedestrians and bicyclists to get to the mall and to pass between businesses here at the mall. What, what would it be like for someone that wanted to, to walk or bike to the mall? Well, we have a very nice sidewalk here along Carl T. Jones. Um, lots of people use it, have for years, love to use it. Uh, however, when we get off the city right away, and we come onto the mall, uh, there may be no sidewalks, there may be no ramps for disabled folks in wheelchairs. And once you, let me turn around this way, once you pass into the mall, you got those acres of parking lot over there to get to before you get to a store. And, and there's no provision for a pedestrian to get across it? No, uh-uh. Not anything unique. You're definitely going to be tangling up with cars and watching out for yourself. And then, uh... Once you're at the mall, uh, how difficult is it to get from one part of the mall to another? Well, the mall is strung out from one end to the other. It's about a half a mile long. Um, it's beautiful sidewalk spaces in front of the shops. Um, one or two bike racks in, in front of the Target uh, business. Uh, however, we have a movie theater that at one time was going to be surrounded by restaurants and gyms in the, des in the original design, but ended up being placed at the back side of the mall, behind the back side of all the other places, uh, surrounded by its own acres of parking, with no pedestrian pass-through between the movie theater and the rest of the mall. So it, it, you're not going to walk from the movies to the Barnes and Nobles to have a cup of coffee after your movie that you saw and you want to talk with your friends. You're just not going to do it. Is this typical of the sort of problems you have with new development in Huntsville? Uh, it's typical in the sense that we have a lot of good intentions to do well of creating something that's attractive and, and um, uh, wonderful to be in, but then we have problems with really designing them correctly so that a real person could really use them and love using them. So yeah, that's pretty typical around here. We have some zoning ordinances, but apparently in our review process and then our um, inspection of uh, the results, uh, we just don't quite pull it off all together so that any one party feels responsible for insisting on good pedestrian bicycle facilities around here. So there's, there was no one out there to ask the question, how do you get from the sidewalk by the street to the front door? Not in a meaningful way so that it really gets done. Uh, if, if you ask the developer, it will say, well, uh, the leases want as many parking spots as possible and how incredibly hard it is to get them to be okay about letting them have a sidewalk, uh, you know, taking up space for a sidewalk in the entryway. Uh, if you talk to the leasers, they'll say uh, they want parking spots and it's really up to the uh, developers and the city and ordinances. So everyone pretty much points a finger at someone else. There isn't anybody that, that, that I can see at this point that feels responsible for making sure that it happens well.
We're in Huntsville, Alabama, talking with Robin Denson, who's executive director of the Alabama Bicycling Coalition. What sort of issues are you dealing with on the statewide level? Um, John, really, uh, Alabama is quite diverse across the states, and so one of the challenges we have is how do we address both the concerns and the challenges in a rural environment, low low economy, uh, where you know there's pretty hard things to choose against fixing roads that don't have bridges where kids can get to school, along with ad addressing pedestrian and bicycling issues, and then we go all the way up to the region we're in here in Huntsville, which is a high tech community state-of-the-art, where we do have the finances and hopefully the infrastructure to support pedestrians and bicyclists. And how, how much of what needs doing has to be done by the state and how much is really up to the local governments to get done? Well, we have a lot of autonomy at the, at the local government level and we also have a lot of um, you know, the government, local, state, and federal looking at each other going, who's going to do what? So uh, our state and federal agencies, of course, the agencies provide the, the, the federal guidelines and the states work amongst those. And the, at the local level, we have some that are more enlightened than others. And uh, in many cases, we, we feel education. Uh, both of the public and uh, the, the, the sector, or the public sector, who are responsible for infrastructure and planning and, and education are working to improve things. So we try to work in those environments uh, to help people understand the needs, both on the user side and on the, uh, the, the responsibility side of, for public safety. What... Uh what sort of uh, programs have you had going on uh, to, to try to get some of these things accomplished? Um, well, we, we've been real successful in Alabama with uh, seeing an increase in walking and recreational bicycling. We've had a lot of uh, federal money come into the state into trails, um, some of them rails to trails programs, others uh, very uniquely kind of positioned in our state like the Underground Railway. It uh, travels from Mobile all the way to Canada, goes through uh, quite a large portion of Alabama. And those trails are really promoting bicycle tourism and uh, that's increasing and of course we have a, a, a nice climate for that. So in, in that respect uh, we're seeing improvements in, and of course the local uh, governments and the businesses respond nicely to seeing increases in, in, in you know, revenues in their, in their communities. Um, on the pedestrian and really the quality of life issues for pedestrians and bicyclists uh, we're a little more challenged, and, and not necessarily just in financial ways. Uh, we, we again have, in, in many instances, we, we do have the budgets and the infrastructure in terms of funding to, to put well-planned communities in place. And, and for some reason, that's just not being focused upon. So our organization, through uh, the advocacy efforts of Alabama Bicycle Coalition, we're working with um, pedestrian organizations, health organizations, as well as bicycling community to um, integrate our voice um, and really look for completing the streets or you know, following the national campaign to, of complete streets. And really, we're, we're a long way off on that, John, but that's our vision. And we do have a few communities in the state that are managing to do that, where they have uh, engineers and planners in leadership positions who really understand what uh, what a, a well-planned pedestrian bicycle community looks like. And you mentioned working with the health community. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily think they'd be concerned about infrastructure and transportation. Uh, What's, what's the connection there? What have you been able to do there? Well, John, I don't know if you've read the paper lately, but Alabama's 48th in the country for obesity, and especially childhood obesity. So we have some real alarming statistics in our state, and we have a lot of effort right now in our state uh, government and federal dollars being expended through the health agencies to address 
the poor health habits, eating and uh, recreation or exercise wise of our citizens and population. So uh, with the schools, we're working th with Safe Routes to School program, uh, public health and safety with the Alabama uh, Heart Association, and also with local and aerial hospitals who have uh, cycling, indoor cycling classes, and we're looking to move those outdoors and during the seasons of the year when it's, you know, a possible here. And uh, do things just happen or do people have to make a plan? Well, we do, John, and the a lot of the local metropolitan planning organizations have local plans, or the MPOs have plans themselves that include bicycle and pedestrian issues. A lot of those, um, in our opinion, need a little beefing up, and so we, we work at that level to uh, kind of get the awareness up. But we also have been uh, diligent in working to support our state's efforts in the bike ped planning at a statewide level. And we currently don't have that in place and we're looking forward very soon to having that. We're in Huntsville, Alabama, talking with David Stone, who's the education chair for the Alabama Cycling Coalition. What does an education chair do? Well, if you look at cycling advocacy, there's four or five major elements. The first is engineering, which is a hardscape. But then you have education, enforcement, encouragement, and then a fifth one added on is evaluation. And if you look at being able to cycle successfully, you want to have elements of all five of those involved. And education is a real key to being able to cycle safely. If you look at, uh, there was a recent University of Texas study uh, on bike lanes, the critical factor they, found was not the engineering, it was the education level of the cyclist and how education and knowing what the risks are and how to cycle safely uh, avoids conflicts that make people uh, not want to cycle. Now, how, do you, how do you go about educating cyclists? What are the alternatives for someone out there that wants to know a little more? Well, the League of American Bicyclists has taught the uh, Bike Ed program and its predecessor, the Effective Cycling classes, uh, there's actually six classes involved. They involve adults, they involve children, they involve cyclists, and they involve motorists. And this has been taught for over 30 years throughout the country. So you have a variety of different ways you can reach the target audience. And uh, some of these are uh, classroom based, they're on the bike. Uh, you teach them to the age of the, um, the child, if it's a children's program, or even you teach their parents. Because as an instructor, I may see a child once, but if I can teach the parents, they can reinforce what I teach every single day, and it will get ingrained in that child. So they start out with a uh, fundamental understanding of what cycling safety is. What, what are the sort of the big mistakes that you tend to see among someone that, that's, that's you know, just starting out in their education and, and doesn't know what to do right yet? The biggest error we see is people do not understand the concept of what's called vehicular cycling. And John Forrester, who developed the program for the League of American Bicyclists, uh, gave the best quote, that cyclists fare best when they act and are treated as drivers of vehicles. Uh, most people equate cycling uh, with getting out of the way of cars, but if you look at the crash statistics, the cyclists, the, the biggest risk is when you start violating the already established rules of the road that you already uh, use in your motor vehicle. And a lot of people will say cyclists ride a bicycle. Cyclist never rides a bicycle, the cyclist drives a bicycle. They are in control of where they go and how fast they get there. Uh, riding is a passive action, you ride a roller coaster. You don't know where you're going, you have no control over that, and you have no control over uh, how fast you go. Uh, as a driver of a vehicle, you, you know, you do control that, and that's where, you know, that critical understanding of taking a, a bicycle as a vehicle that is driven rather than a toy a lot of times is characterized that is ridden. And you talked about the importance of educating motorists as well as cyclists. What do motorists have to know? Motorists also, uh, in the quote from Forrester, to treat a cyclist like a driver of a vehicle, um, most motorists want you to get out of their way. 
Uh, the misperception is that as a result of you're going to get hurt, you're going to there's going to be a crash. It's more out of a, you know, convenience for the motorist. Uh, they feel they're Im impeded on uh, if they actually have to uh, take into account a, a slower moving vehicle. And that really comes into whether it's a bicycle or a farm tractor uh, or a construction vehicle. They don't like having to slow down in today's society to actually share the road with other users that have a, a legitimate use for that uh, facility. Now, how does education work with enforcement? Well, enforcement is for those folks that won't follow the rules. You, you try and teach them, but even among experienced cyclists, there is still a uh, perception of that you're not uh, and you're not, um, you know, you don't have to follow the rules. Uh, you'll see uh, experienced cyclists uh, very notoriously run stop signs or stop lights. Um, you'll see them uh, at times uh, cycle against traffic, uh, all of which are fundamental breakdowns of the vehicular you know, code and the way you know, traffic is supposed to operate. And that's where enforcement comes in, is you have to have police that come in ticket cyclists, they ticket motorists that, you know, are unwilling to follow those rules of the road. So what, uh, what have you been able to accomplish so far here in Alabama and, and what do you hope to accomplish over the next few years? Well, the first thing we're trying to get in Alabama is more instructors. Uh, currently there are four active instructors for the entire state of Alabama. And so by training more instructors and having them in more locations, we can offer it to more people and more types of people, uh, especially having it for uh, children in, in schools. That's uh, a critical element of uh, teaching is uh, getting it into the middle schools as a part of the PE curriculum. We spend more time teaching kids how to play football than about how to stay safe on a bicycle. Um, the next thing where we want to go is uh, you know, implement that fully across the state as an education, uh, implement it in motorist education. Uh, we're trying to work uh, with the state to improve the driver's license manual. Um, unfortunately, one perspective is that you only have to have a minimum and basic understanding of safety in order to get a driver's license. Uh, we're working with police departments around the state to educate them on what the code means as far as enforcing bicycle law. Uh, what the common mistakes are for both cyclists and motorists, and then how to investigate a bicycle crash. What in particular do they need to know to do their job properly and ensure that both motorists and cyclists stay safe? We're in Birmingham, Alabama, talking with Sue Martin. What sort of difficulties do you face trying to get around as a pedestrian every day? Uh, the speed of vehicles, um, people just fly on these downtown streets. Um, the, um, at the end of a, of a light cycle, um, inevitably somebody runs a red light. Um, <clears throat> I have, I think anybody that travels um, as a pedestrian has a right turn on red problem. Um, if my parallel traffic, sorry, if my parallel traffic um, begins to move, I have the right of way to cross the street, but somebody perpendicular to me who's turning right is going to be looking left, and then they only look back right after they've started to make the turn. Um, another problem is this is the medical district of Birmingham. We have a lot of hospitals, and um, there are a lot of parking ramps. Uh, and people come barreling out of parking ramps without slowing down or looking. And I actually had one driver argue with me about who had the right of way on the sidewalk. <laughs> and uh, driver behavior uh, is one aspect of things. How about the infrastructure? What problems do you have there? Um, there there are some problems with curb cuts um, either n not being there or being offset like I'll begin to cross the street at a curb cut and if my dog angles um, I, I just have to go with her because sometimes the curb cuts are not um, lined up 
Um, I've had situations where um, manhole covers have been left off of manholes and just like a couple of cones have been put up. Um, broken glass on sidewalks, um, which is not a problem for me, but it is a problem for my dog. Um, there have been situations where, you know, a lot of times at street corners there are a lot of signs and newspaper boxes and things, and um, in really blustery weather those signs can sometimes get blown over and the um, uprights end up sticking up and the sign is on the ground. Um, and that's, if you're using a cane, if you're a blind pedestrian using a cane, it'd be easy to impale yourself. Um, my dog pretty pretty much takes me around things like that, but um, the, I think the an overall feeling that I have as a blind pedestrian is that drivers don't understand that a dog in harness means that I am blind, and um, they behave in such a way that a sighted pedestrian would. Um, would be able to see them come in and back off or, or you know, change their direction. But because I can't see the cars, um, it, it's kind of like a Mexican standoff. Uh, who's going to give first? What can be done? What needs to be done in terms of educating drivers about what they should be doing? Well, I think the first thing um, that and, and perhaps the most immediately helpful would be law enforcement. Um, on these um, city streets, a car going 50 miles an hour, it's just inexcusable. Um, <clears throat> the um, enforcement of other traffic laws, um, the running of red lights, um, parking on sidewalks, um, or parking in a driveway that crosses a sidewalk and just leaving a car. Um, uh, that to me that would be um, the first perhaps avenue to take um, to increase driver awareness um, yeah I, I for a long time I thought that um, that raising public awareness through um, videos or speaking to driver's ed classes um, might make a difference but it's it's such a huge problem that I'm not really sure that that can be effective. Um, people are so wrapped up in themselves, um, in a hurry, uh, talking on cell phones. Um, I, it, it's, it's just a huge problem mm -hmm. and I as a blind pedestrian have to, I'm mm -hmm. the one that has to be aware um, because I don't think there's any way to educate every driver in the world. We're in Birmingham, Alabama, talking with Jim Martin. What are conditions like for pedestrians in Birmingham? Very really difficult. Um, the uh, automobile traffic really moves much too quickly, um, and there's very limited, it seems to be very limited enforcement of, of traffic laws by the police. Um, I hear that people have been hit and killed in Birmingham by traffic. Um, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but uh, I know it happens. Uh, as infrastructure, sidewalks, crosswalks? Uh... Well, there's a lot of construction going on in Birmingham, and um, there, oftentimes the uh, area that is a uh, construction area isn't adequately marked. Um, and the, there are difficulties with existing infrastructure with uh, curb cuts and uh, sidewalks that are broken up or, um, or not, not happening at all, no sidewalks at all in some places. <clears throat> um, and occasionally you find drain covers and uh, manhole covers off, off the openings. How much of the problem is is infrastructure, and how much is is the driver behavior? Um, 
I would say most of its driver behavior, uh, most of the problems here. Uh, just uh, everyone's in a hurry to get where they want to go and they're not looking for pedestrians. Um, we're such a automobile-centered, oriented culture that pedestrians kind of take a back seat and uh, aren't given the awareness that they need to be. We're in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, talking with Heike Schott. What is it like for a family in the neighborhood over here trying to get to the park behind us? Well, the problem here is uh, that um, you have a nice park and a neighborhood really close by in walking distance. Uh, the only thing is that there is no really safe way to cross the street. Um, so most of the people just take the car, even if it's only for a couple of hundred yards, which is a pity because uh, with obesity rates um, uh, increasing, it would be nice for everybody to get a walk work out while walking to the park. Wow. Why, uh, where else would someone be going walking down this road? Where are the other destinations are down here? Well, down the road in that way is the university. So there is an increasing number of students living in this neighborhood as well. And some of them cycle to the university, but the road is very narrow and there are um, no warning signs that uh, bicyclists might share the street. And uh, there have been a couple of incidents where motorists yell at um, bicyclists to to get off the road. Are there nice places to go uh, walking with your son? Well, there are nice places. One place we especially enjoy is the newly built river walk and levee walk um, along the Black Warrior River, one on the south side, one on the north side. Um, the cities of Tuscaloosa and Northport are planning to make these trails longer, which will be a very great project. And uh, both of my kids, this one and an older son that I have, enjoy a lot riding their bicycles and tricycles there. What, uh, what other sort of challenges do you face trying to get around town with your, with your sons? Well, basically, um, with kids that age, the only measure of transportation is the car. Um, even if distances are short, you could, um, before I had kids, I was uh, riding my bike from here to the, uh, to the university or downtown. Uh, but with kids, it's just too dangerous and there are no public transportation or very little public transportation that you could be using. So all place of interest um, needs to be um, accessed by car. Visit us on the internet at www.pedestrians.org.